Four terrible mistakes Christians often make. As Christians, we may do certain things that we may not consider wrong but in the right sense and before God it is very wrong. Upholding one's faith is not easy and sometimes we deviate in the course without even noticing that we are moving on the wrong track. That is why I have made this video to encourage Christians to be steadfast and seek God more for direction and purpose. Great one, I have come again to seek for powers, so that whenever I preach and prophecy miracles will happen. People will fall under anointing and my church population will grow and they will keep making more money. That is not a problem. I will give you powers that you will use to continue running your church and gain more members. Because as you gain more members it is also bringing more souls to us. Go and print some stickers, make sure that your picture is on it. Bring the stickers to me when they are ready so that I can fortify them with some spells and charms. Then you can share them to all your members. Tell them to paste the sticker in front of their doors and stand in front of the stickers whenever they pray in their homes. And as they pray, they must bow before the picture of you in the stickers and pray using your name. If they do this, you are bringing more souls to us and your church will keep growing and become the biggest church in the whole world. Okay wise one, I will do exactly as you have said. I am sure my members will comply because they have so much trust and believe in me. Make sure you do everything as I said. We have come to the end of today's service, as you go home, may the God I serve go home with you. Any miracle you are expecting will come to you. The God that I serve will always keep you and provide all your need. As long as you believe in me, the God that I serve will always be with you. Before you leave the church premises, please endeavor to get the church new stickers, stick them on your doors and use them whenever you pray. Make sure you bow so that your prayers will be very effective. Go in peace and return with testimonies. May my God be with you all. Amen. I am so excited, I can't wait to get these new stickers. The old one was very effective. Oh God of Pastor Sammy, I come before you now to ask for your blessings, thank you for everything you have done for me. I glorify your name, every time I pray and ask you for something you have always come through for me. I will continue to praise your name my go. God of my Papa Pastor Sammy thank you for preserving my family and I. We will continue to worship you and praise your name. Amen. Good afternoon neighbor, it seems you are just coming back from church. Yes, I just got home now. As I was passing by, I overheard you praying. And there is something that I heard you say that really troubles me. What was that? I overheard you praying using the name of your pastor instead of the name of God or Jesus. And you were also bowing before the sticker on your door. Yes, I was. That is how we pray in our church. Well, sorry to tell you but that is very wrong. That is idolatry. You are worshipping your pastor instead of God your maker. Exodus 20, 3-6 Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Indirectly. You are practicing idolatry, because you have made an image which you bow to. And pray in the name of man instead of God. But I don't think there is anything wrong with that. Besides the prayers work for me. Everything is wrong with it. Yes the prayers might seem to be working now. But for how long? The pastor you pray on his name is human and flesh. I am not trying to judge, all I am saying is that you should stop doing these things. God frowns at them. He is a jealous God and cannot share his glory with any man. Isaiah 42 verse 8 I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another and my praise to idols. I have never come across this portion of the Bible. That is the word of God. It is still not too late to make amends. Take down all these stickers that you bow to and never ever pray to any human or idol again. 
ask God to forgive you and give you a discerning spirit to be able to know the right church you should attend. Thank you very much for this revelation. I never knew I was practicing idolatry until now. I will put away all these things immediately. You are welcome. Have a great day. Honey you are still on the bed, are you not coming to the church with me? We are almost running late. I don't think I will be going to church today. Why? The month just ended and you know that I just received my salary. If I go to church it will be expecting of me to pay my tithe today and I am not ready for that. I can't remove 10% for my salary this month. I already have plans for the money. So you can go alone. I will go next Sunday. Are you being serious? First of all, nobody is forcing you to pay tithes in church. And secondly what's wrong if you do? If God has blessed you financially what is the big deal of you support his work with 10% of your income? I can't afford to give out 10% of my labor to the pastor just like that. He is getting richer with our money. Leviticus 27, 30 says a tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain or fruit, is the Lord's, and is holy. Malachi 3 verse 10 bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Point of correction. Don't always think you are doing this for the pastor. Besides you can decide to use the money to buy something to support the work of God. Like chairs for the church or even petrol for the church. That way you are also supporting God's work and fulfilling the scripture and you will be blessed in return. Besides what is even wrong if you feed the pastor? Someone is at the door. I will get the door. Good afternoon Chris, please I need your help. What is it Dan? You know I have not been paid for 4 months now. I am totally broke and my family is hungry. We do not have money to buy food. Please can you help me with some money, so I can buy food for my kids. No matter how small, I just need my kids to have something to eat they have not eaten since yesterday. I, I am sorry about that. I would have loved to help but I do not have any money. I have not been paid to. I wish I can help, but my hands are tied. Honey I am disappointed in you. I overheard your conversation with Mr. Dan. That man told you his family is starving and you lied to him that you didn't have money. When you just got paid. What kind of a human are you? How can you be so cold hearted? I thought you are a Christian. Of course I am a devoted Christian. If you are a Christian then you should know what the Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 17 Whoever is kind to the poor lands to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Also I think you should go and read the book of Matthew 25 verse 36 through 40 then you will understand that but giving to the needy, you have given to God and that is another way of serving God with your resources. At this point I feel so ashamed of myself. I have been stingy to the same person who has given me all I have today. I thought I was just doing it for pastor. From today onwards I will not skip my tithes and offerings. I will help the needy in every given opportunity. In fact I will go to Mr. Dan's house and give him some money to feed his family now. Also wait for me so that we can go to the church together. Okay dear. That is very nice of you. Is that not Lisa walking at the front? Maybe I should stop and pick her up. I'm sure she is going to the wedding ceremony. Good afternoon Lisa. You are going to Jenny's wedding ceremony right? Hop in let's go together. No no. I am not going to that wedding. But why? You can't miss your friend's wedding. Or were you not invited? Of course I was invited, but I won't attend. Because she didn't attend mine. I got married last year and she didn't show up for my wedding. And it's not like she was out of town then. Oh really? But I am sure she had a good reason for not attending your wedding. She didn't have any tangible reason. And because of that I have vowed not to attend hers too. Lisa, I don't think this is necessary. That she didn't attend yours doesn't mean you have to retaliate. Forgive her and move on. 
We are Christians and we have to follow the footsteps of our leader who is Christ. No matter how people offend you, always find a place in your heart to forgive them. Even we as human we always offend God but he forgives us every time. As humans, we love to hold a grudge. The problem is, grudges are terribly unhealthy. In Matthew 18 verse 22 Jesus said that we are to forgive people no fewer than 490 times, and in Matthew 6:15 he also said that if we are unwilling to forgive our brothers and sisters here on earth, God would be reluctant to forgive us. So if you also think you deserve God's forgiveness, you have to forgive those who offend you. As a Christian holding grudges is a sin. I think you were right. I will just forgive her and let everything be in the past so that I can be able to have a clean and clear conscience to serve God. That's what I am talking about. I will just rush home and change into something better and meet you up at the wedding venue. Okay, I will be waiting. Mom, I will be going for a bit, I am going to visit Michael. We have a project we are working on together. Which Michael? You mean that good-for-nothing boy? How can you be on the same project team with him? He is a dull brain. You should stop mingling with that boy. He is not smart at all. I don't want him to influence your intelligence. You know what they say about bad company, right? But mom, Michael is not a bad influence. He is just not very smart. Which I think is normal. Besides, he is trying to learn and that is the reason for this project. You must pull out from that team. I don't want you on the same team with that boy. I don't want him to drag you down to his level. Besides I don't like his family. They are not very spiritual as we are. His mom is not a worker in church and I am very sure that they have very low morals. Some days ago I saw his mom with some group of women who are not born again. I am sure his parents are not born again. I don't want him to influence you. Mom, you don't even know his family well and you are concluding. I have known him for so long and he is a good kid. I don't need to know him for long. By mere looking at the one can tell the kind of people they are. You know my relationship with God, I don't want anything that will spoil it. That boy is never allowed to step feet into this house and you are not allowed to be friend ass with him and that's final. I overheard your conversation with our son and I don't think that was necessary. The least you could do is get to know the boy or his family. I don't think he is that bad. I don't want that boy anywhere near my son dot and that's final. He is a very dull kid. And his family looks like they are bad people. I don't want anyone to spoil our son. As Christians we must protect ourselves. I know wrong when I see wrong. When will you ever change? As a Christian you should have known that it is very wrong to judge people. Especially when you do not even know them well. You have just judged and condemned that poor kid. He might be dull but that doesn't make him bad. It's not his fault that he is dull academically. And it is a good thing for our son to be able to help. You always think every other person is bad and you are the only people who is always right. Matthew 7, 1-4, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. According to Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9 For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. By God's grace we are blessed with a son that is very smart and intelligent, that doesn't mean we should look down on others and think it is by our own power. Maybe you should read the book of Romans 2 verse 1 through 5. And ponder upon it. The purpose of this video is not to make you feel guilty. Rather I want you to be encouraged. These mistakes and lot are common for those of us who follow Christ, especially those who are not rooted in the word of God. I hope these ideas will help you to strengthen your faith, and make your relationship with God better and stronger. Thank you for watching and do well to share this video to you fellow Christians, family and loved ones. Also kindly subscribe, like and turn on notification to this channel for more interesting and life-changing videos. God bless you.